He said, how long should a talking stage take? I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I do not think it's ridiculous if your talking stage takes like more than like three months. I don't think it's ridiculous to say that. If your talking stage takes like three months. Cause you gotta think about it, right? A lot of people rush into getting relationships and a lot of people rush to moving in. I don't think it's ridiculous if you talk for like three months. Because you gotta think about it. You really gotta learn this person. You feel me? Y'all rush to get with these people and y'all rush to get in relationships. I'm not going to lie to y'all. There's been a couple of times you rush to get in a relationship, you rush a talking stage. Next thing you know, this person moves in with you quick as hell. You find out this leave doodle streaks on the toilet. And that's how they was raised. Well, I was raised to pull this switch out when someone does something nasty. So what are we about to do? That's not cool, my You leave a doodle on my toilet. And the second I'm about to blow this motherfucking house up. Y'all have to understand something. Talking stages is still y'all being boyfriend and girlfriend and y'all together. Y'all don't realize that. It's just that people try to disband the talking stages because some try to act like a talking stage shouldn't be loyal. Here's the thing though. If you in the talking stage, me personally, I'm not going to be in the talking stage of somebody that's still getting cracked and still sucking me. That's not what talking stage is supposed to be. You're not still supposed to be doing you. We still be figuring each other out and wondering if we can fix and work. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm not going to lie to y'all. I think the worst thing to do is move in with your girl too fast. Because I'm not going to lie. Moving in with somebody too fast can either break or, or make or break a relationship. Every time I moved in with somebody too fast, the next day, I was getting three-piece compost in my head and put a switch to my head over some bacon. I told y'all this all the time. Getting my beard ripped off, getting threaded with knives, getting threaded with switches, all types of shit over fucking bacon. I'm not going to lie to y'all. That's, that's, that's crazy work. That's insane work. I think, you know what? I think a talking stage could last six months. I don't, why do I have to run? Here's the thing that women don't understand, right? Men are so simple. Women say, oh, I want to get asked to be your girlfriend. Well, bitch, one plus one equals two. If it quack, it look like a duck, it's a duck. So let me explain something to y'all. If, 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 we've been together for like two months, I mean for two or three months, you be with me every day. I pay for your food, you swallow my ball sack. You. We go on dates every day. Why do I have to ask you on a plate with chocolate syrup on it? Will you be my girlfriend? What the f else you think you is, my nigga? You think you my bro? Like I don't have a problem asking you to be my girlfriend, but if you fit in the details of being my girlfriend, what the f does that mean to you? You're my nigga, my nigga. Yo, I ain't mean it like that. I ain't mean to say you're my. That's that shit came out wrong. You're my girl, but I don't think it's ridiculous to say that a talking stage shouldn't last no more than six months. They said, why are you back on Twitch? I got a band. What does that mean? Yo, y'all already put a question mark. Y'all know what I meant by that, bro. Just chill. Y'all going for clips right now. I'm not going to lie. Which streamer has the biggest nose you ever seen besides you? I'm not going to lie. You right with no license. You need to take a day, my What's the worst fit that you have witnessed? I'm, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. This is the worst fit I've ever seen in my life. I'm not going to lie. I used to think this fit wasn't that bad, but I kept looking at it and breaking it down. This is the worst fit I ever put on in my life. I still don't think it's that bad though, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't think that fit is that bad, in my personal opinion. What I could, the first picture is not that bad. This picture got me a lot of hoes in the past. It's the other poses I started doing. Like I had to delete some of the original, like this is ass, my I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is terrible. It's not even that bad for real. Like the gold chain down my neck, the curls, the beard, it's not even that bad for real. With the off white, I ain't gonna lie, I give it like at least a 7 point out of, out of point 0.5 out of 10. That fit is so ass, chat. Y'all on some bullshit. Okay, but look, y'all can't tell me I didn't redeem myself by this. Y'all can't tell me this fit right here wasn't tough. Y'all can't tell me I didn't redeem myself. Come on now. Come on now. He said this fit is ass too. All right. I can't win. But let somebody else who wore that fit, y'all have been sucking the meat off that. Bones. Like, wore that fit. Y'all be like, oh my god, W fit. Oh my god. You start jumping and jiggling your booty meat and shit. Let another nigga with a pose in that fit. You be like, oh, you that fit is so hard. Where you get the pants and the jacket from? But when I do it, it's gonna troll me. Just don't think I, if Duke wore it, it would be fire. Time him out. You blazing another man. That nigga don't know you. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it true with a bunk with y'all. I gotta blow my nose right quick, bruh. Hold on. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all on some truth. I was in, I was at DreamCon. I seen Fanta, I seen Duke, and I seen a couple other niggas. They had the shine, no blaze. They had the shiniest chain I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen a chain shine that much. I had my old grills. I had my old little. And I'm not gonna lie. I said Gluck, that chain was shiny as hell. I said, Yo, this got some money. Why you ain't take it, bro? 
Let me tell you how I got ego in the dream car. <laughs> a quick story time about dream car. I didn't tell the other in the other dream car story time. Real little quick little story time. All right, so remember how the TikTok app kept clipped me out of context saying I got ego in the dream car and it's I was spiraling out. Let me tell y'all what happened. So I'm at dream car, right? Mind y'all, I don't have a talent badge. I don't know how to get it. I don't know if I'm big enough to get it. I don't give a f I'm at dream car, right? I'm with AJ. So AJ like, yo, I'm gonna try to get you to the basketball game. I'm gonna try to get you to the back door. Cal, appreciate the sub. I'm gonna get you to the back door. So I'm like, all right, cool, appreciate you, my So this is what happens. So I'm standing right there at this specific door to get into Dream Car. So I'm standing right there, right? This is secure, I think it was, it was Phantoms, it was one security guard. He was swole as hell. He had on a, a satchel, and on the outline of the satchel, I see the Desert Eagle. So I say, you know what? I'm not gonna press this. So he's talking to AJ. He doesn't even let AJ's cameraman in at first. He looks at AJ's cameraman and said, nah, you not getting in. The AJ like, nah, it's my cameraman. I got my time back. He, he helped me record. He's like, all right, after him, nobody else. The nigga look over at me. I turn my head. I didn't want to make eye contact with this nigga. I seen a satchel with a big ass 50 cal pistol in it. I said, hey, you know what? I looked at AJ. I texted him and died to him. I said, you know what? If I don't get into that game, you know what? I'm cool, I think I'm gonna go out there and get some more content. Cause this is swole and probably look like he know Taekwondo and he got a big ass, you know what I'm saying? So I say that, and look, y'all, if y'all ever seen that video on TikTok of me, I'm like standing against the wall, that's why I look like that. This was getting pressed right there, not getting the basketball game. Luckily, I found some real niggas that helped me get in the back and I got into the basketball game. You know what's crazy? One nigga said, it was a, t a Twitter, a, tw a Twitter uh, clip of me. Come on, this shit frowned the f I, mean, I was talking about when I was getting ego. At DreamCon said, yo, I got it, and they wouldn't even let this T Banks in. Somebody said, I ain't gonna lie, this is so different in person. I didn't know who the f he was. I'm like, yo, why is he cooking me like this? I was T Banks. He said, I have no idea what T Banks. I ain't, he didn't even look the same in person. I didn't know who the f he was. He looked like a thing that was just complaining. I try to tell you, I don't look the same in person. But I was getting cooked. I'm back now on Twitch though, so I don't give a f nigga. I'm running it up. No more bads, no more none of that. I'm going crazy for the rest of the fall, nigga. Did you used to be scared of Michael Jackson as a kid? I'm not gonna lie. I was never scared of Michael Jackson, but I never thought Michael Jackson was gay though. A lot of people think that gay. I feel like Michael Jackson type of nigga, he got a whole bunch of But I never thought he was gay though. Like a lot of people thought Michael Jackson, I don't think he was gay. I thought he got, I always thought he got a whole bunch of Like he looked like a type of nigga that had about 30 walk in and out of his crib. I know that nigga had hoes. So I'm gonna keep it real with you. It's Michael f Jackson. People come, I ain't gonna lie. Some pictures that was scary though. He has so much aura, holy hell, you're taking it right in the ass. Look, how am I supposed to present my girl to my family? Great question. Great way to present your girl to my, your family. I'm not gonna lie to you. Every that gets hoes, y'all have had the same mistake of accidentally introducing like four hoes to your family. I've had that happen each time. I'm sitting right there on the couch. I got my shit zipping down. I'm ready to get my slurp. My parents walk in. They see the girl, they're like, hey, who are you? Hey, how you doing? The girl say, hey, my name is, I'm like, hold on, baby. You're unidentified assailant number one. Let my parents go upstairs. I grab her lips. I say, mm -mm, mm -mm. No name. Because when my mom comes after you leave and say, hold on, baby, who, who was this girl that was in my house? I'm going to say, hey, don't worry about that. Wait, chat, my nose is clearing up. I can breathe. Chat, I can breathe. The perfect way to present your girl to your family, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I used to present my girl within like a month or two, but I feel like the perfect time to present a girl is between months six to eight, right outside of the honeymoon phase. Because you're gonna think about it. When y'all actually start having arguments and switch battles start happening over cheese, over shower lace, over who washed the clothes last, this is when you're gonna see whether or not the relationship's gonna really last. So I feel like you really should introduce your girl as about with months six through eight of the relationship. Because months six through eight is when they break up anyway. Every relationship I've been in that we've broken up is always been around the six month mark. I'm not gonna lie, six or seven months. So once you can make it past that mark, it's like, all right, now you valid enough to meet my motherfucking parents. And I don't think some niggas say that. Now the best way to present your girl to your family is you always give the warning first. You call your mom, you call your dad. You, you call your parents, they'll ask you, hey, you got a new girlfriend, you're like, yeah, I'm talking to somebody, this, that, the third. That's 
months two, three, two to three, you set it up. You set up the pre-meeting. Now months three to four, you wait for your mom to say, when am I gonna meet this girl? You be like, you know what, I've been busy, things in nature, I'm gonna set something up. You keep the land intro because you don't want this woman to meet your girl. Next you know, you and her and your mom is on the baddest love episode, your mom's beating the shit out of the girl because the girl is disrespectful. Months six to eight, is when you finally introduce your girl. But what you do is you introduce her to your sibling first. I always introduce the girl to my brother first. I send a picture, we both take a picture. My brother approved, he say, who was that? I said, this is my girl. He said, oh, all right, she pretty instead of third. I'm locked in. Now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I feel like introducing your girl to your mom is a lot less awkward than introducing your girl to your dad. Every time I introduce my girl to my dad, this shit I swear to y'all, one time I'm sitting right there with my with one of my exes. We outside on the porch. This nigga kicked my foot. He looks at me smiling. I see you. What? Right in front of him. Like, I see you. What? I love man. Mind you, she can hear everything this nigga said. He started kicking my foot. I see you. What? He said, you got a little something. I'm like, what the f are you doing? I'm, there's been times I walked up with my girl, my ex, to come in the house and this third. This nigga had no shirt on. What are you doing? Shit. Start coming downstairs, start making random foods and bacon to start cleaning the kitchen and shit. Then he'll look at and my dad, he's a little like, you know, I can't say the word, he's a little slow. He'll look around the corner like this. Talk about something. But he makes it obvious he's looking at me. Like he'll open, he'll, blow, he'll go to the door, act like it's locked, open it, close the door, lock it again, and he'll go like this. What are you doing? I promise you, they will unlock the door, open it, close it, lock it again, turn around, start going. What are you doing? Niggas is making me uncomfortable. I remember one time my dad was on some weird shit. He told y'all this one time. Nigga told me that he was in the back of the, we had a we had a, a Nissan Maxima one time, 2018, brand new. One time he said, yo, I know you use the car sometimes to drive and take girls out on dates. I told y'all this on kick if he was over there. He was like, one time I seen the back of the car and it was human secretions. He was saying I was nothing in the back of the maxima. I was like, what are you talking about? I said, nigga, I've never Clean your human secretions. Hey, you was touching it? You was touching my baby powder? Baby nigga? I'm like, nigga, what is wrong with you? Hey, you ever tell your friend the wrong or do you just let them vibe out? I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the perfect way to defend somebody, even when you know they're wrong, is protect and stand for them in public, but you check them in private. For example, if I see my girl right there arguing with some over some chicken wings. My girl said that's our chicken wings, but it's the other girl's chicken wings. I'm trying to tell my girl, hey, we ordered buffalo, they ordered lemon pepper. We didn't order lemon pepper. But she still said, no, we ordered lemon pepper. And if I see five start stomping my girl out, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna keep it a buck. In GT and RP, I'm swinging, I'm not this out. I will never let my wife get beat up by five, ten These hands are ready to eat for everyone. No switch. I'm coming through. I'm just. <laughs> Now, when we get back to the crib, I'm gonna say, baby, I ain't gonna lie, I'm drop kicking my children off. Baby. I'm in the Mortal Kombat fatalities. Now, when we get to the crib, I'm gonna say, I didn't got stabbed with a makeup brush. I got tased by one of them Amazon tasers. I think I might have some Amazon beer spray in my eyes. I don't know how. You didn't got us into a World War, a WWE. All out brawl over some lemon pepper chicken wings. And it wasn't even ours. I'm gonna check your ass in, pri in private. But in public, I'm always gonna defend. I don't give a f what my girl did. I don't care if she cut in front of 200 people at an amusement park. If n start coming up with someone I love, I'm knocking everybody the f out. Because you don't have to talk to her like that nigga talk to me like that. Especially if you a grown ass man. I'm out of breath because I can't breathe, my nigga. I got fat. I don't care who you think you is. I'm knocking everybody the and then when we get in at private, I'm knocking your ass out too for putting me in that position. I done got, if a nigga stomp, look, look at the side of my cranium me. If a nigga stomp on the side of my head, my shit is, is fucked up for the, for the rest of my life. I can never brush the side of my head again. Comb my shit up. I think they might poke chrome on my brain matter. I'm gonna knock your ass out because you didn't change my life permanently. Why right we get back to the crib? What the fuck is wrong with you? Or Nick Van Ocker. But in, in public, I'm always going to defend you though. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, damn. I gotta check your ass in private. Is it crazy to get toys that beef up your dick? 
I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I have used a penis pump before. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I have used a pump before. Did it work? Like, did it make my shit like more like wider? I'm not gonna confirm. All I'm gonna say is, when I used to wrap my hand around it, it would be like middle finger to thumb. Now my middle finger can't reach it. I don't think it's crazy. You gotta think about it. My penis is always gonna be there, right? So you gotta really think about it. There's no reason why I wouldn't wanna change my body. If I go to the gym, I lift weights, that's because I want to get more swollen. My penis is always going to be there in GTRP, and I want it to get bigger or longer. If I have it for the rest of my life and I'm not happy for it, why wouldn't I use something that can change the dimensions of it? And tell me if it's ridiculous to say that. I don't think it's ridiculous. It's my penis. I want it to get bigger. I love it. I'm secure with myself. But if I had to change to make it bigger, I'm not going to say the first part of your name. Warrior, appreciate that fire gifted. If I want my shit to get bigger, what's wrong with me? Like, y'all niggas are too worried about what another nigga's doing with his penis. I want it to get bigger. Why would they make it if it don't work or if niggas don't want to try it? What's the worst that can happen? They sold me snake oil and don't work? Okay, cool. What's the best that can happen? My shit get bigger? It's a, it's a win to, like... It's either a win or lose situation. Either you it gets bigger and you're like, damn, my shit got bigger or I lost. I spent money or something. Next, you know you're more secure about yourself. I don't think it's ridiculous to say that. I don't mind if you do that, but please just show us the port before or after pictures. Y'all say everything can't cool. But I don't think it's ridiculous to use toys that make your meat like a lot, like on steroids. What's like, think about it. You want to pull your shit out on some shit like this? And she's like, oh, okay, I've had bigger. Or you want to pull your shit out just like this? Too. Y'all get the point. Which one you want? Y'all tell me. What's a sign a girl can give you that shows that she will not be your wife? Big D's, appreciate the sub. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. A sign a girl can give me that she will not be my wife is any that takes Instagram stories and reels and turns it into a real wife. I already said this multiple times. I don't give a f what you see, money bag yo, and already do. I don't give a f if you see her, he bought he bought her Lamborghini because it's her, her 31st birthday. He cheated on her 31 times. I don't give a what you see that's not real life my card and my money is not your card and your money so there's no reason why if i tell you no next you know i got a knife in my throat in gtrp because you feel like i'm not taking care of y'all not take care of a woman i don't give a f what you see on instagram i don't give a f what you see on youtube i don't give a f what f any of these influencers say i don't give a f what the red pill women say about oh a nigga should buy everything in your life big wee's okay donated three dollars my goodness Look at that nose. Bro, my that nose not even that big, bro. I have a good nose, bro. Just chill. I don't give a f what you seen or what you heard. I'm going to treat you like real life. I'm not going to lie to you. Or signs that girls would show that she would not be your wife. I don't give a f what you heard about casting that makes $140 million a year. Baby, I just got a man. I only have 580 subs. I don't give a f what you think. I'm not going to sit right there and buy you a G-Wagon for your 23rd, birth, birth, 23rd birthday and you don't even have a driver's license. I don't give a f what you heard, what you seen. You will never be my wife. When money becomes the thing of how good I treat you. Because the, the, the best I've ever treated a woman is when I had no money. I'm not going to lie to you. So now I got a little bit of money. Now you think I'm going to treat you the best in the world because I'm going to buy everything. That should not dictate how we love each other. I shouldn't have to go to the store and buy you a Teflar bag, some, some Lululemon slides and shit, some Uggs, and then a car if you feel like, oh, this man's treating me how I should be treated. That's not how relationships work. Real talk. Now, another sign a girl would not be my wife is any bitch that's too quick to act like doesn't matter like body count don't matter the train she had running her don't matter because that's not her no more oh no it is if i do like captain america civil war and start saying code names silver calculator seven three bug spray if i say something like that you're gonna activate like the sleeper agent next you know you're gonna have 18 niggas spawn around you next you know i'm gonna uh, uh, roll like Bukaki. don't activate that's not you no more baby oh no it is it's still there just because you don't do it no more doesn't act like niggas try to, people try to act like oh i don't do it no more so that's not me listen if, if, if let me tell you something right quick if i got on the airplane let's say i want to go fly out to atlanta right now i got on the airplane the policy i only 
crashed the plane one time, but I won't do it again. I'm gonna get off the plane so fast, the niggas wouldn't have to worry about my TSA pre-check no more. Cause you did it one time, you act like you ain't gonna do it again. What made you do it the first time, motherfucker? This ain't flight. You ain't Denzel Washington. You about to fly it upside down and make sure it land, nigga. You got me fucked up, what? If you walk into your crib and you see your wife cheating on you in the bed that you paid for with the motion you got, what shotgun are you using? A Atchison A12, a U size A12, a hip a H and K cause, a D Smith and Western Assault shotgun, or E all of the above. I'm not gonna lie, if I walk into my crib and I see my wife cheating on me with the motion I got, I'm gonna dap her up and be like, you know what, I see why you did what you had to do. What would you choose to be your last meal? I'm gonna go with like a bucket of chicken, some macaroni cheese, and cornbread. Have you ever dealt with a cougar? The closest I've ever dealt with a cougar, I'm not gonna lie, I used to get hit on by older women all the time. But the most I ever got close to dealing with a cougar, I was like 19. I was a substitute teacher, and it was this one teacher that was like 24 or 25. It was like two of them that was trying to get at me. But other than that, I've never been with somebody over 30 or 40. Is that shit fire, chat? Nigga said you forgot the Kool-Aid, and his name is Redneck. Time him out. Never did that. Cougar's like 50, 60, bro. Shit, nigga, I just thought the cougars anytime that shit started to sit, like to lose the juices and shit. Since when was you a sub? I was 19 and sub two teacher. You was probably the cool sub? I was. I was graded like eight, like grades from kindergarten to, to fifth grade. A lot of them kids were stupid. I'm not gonna lie. Come up to me with like the worst drawing ever and be like, <laughs> I'm like, man, get the fuck out of my face and go redo that shit, man. If I take your chocolate milk privileges away, nigga. <laughs> Have you ever experienced racism? Yes. The last time I ever experienced racism, here's the thing that y'all don't understand about racism. Sometimes racism is in the most passive aggressive way that you would never understand. Like for some reason, a lot of people do not think that black people have the ability to get like first class or like the like good flight, like flight tickets. I'm at the motherfucking airline ready to go to Dream Car. Mind y'all, I'm, I'm assigned the kick, still am kind of. I'm right here, right? A nigga comes up to me, a white dude, he comes up to me. He's like, uh, Mind you, I'm in the A line for Southwest. I was A2 or A3. My camera is wobbling. I don't know why. Nigga comes up to me, right? It was a white lady in front of me. I'm standing right there, and there's nobody behind me. We both got the A shit. Nigga comes up to me. He looks me in my eyes. He doesn't ask nobody else standing right there in the A group. He looks me in my eyes and said, uh, are you in the A group? Mind you, the nigga don't work here. Are you in the A group? Uh, what, what, what number are you? Why the f If you see me standing behind somebody... I took my headphones off because I knew he was talking some bullshit. I said, what'd you say, cuz? He said, uh, are you in the A group? He doesn't ask nobody else. He says, are you in the A group? Like, what group are you in? I go, is there, he was like, oh, are, you know, I'm seeing you standing right here. I said, what, what, I said, I asked him, I said what, what the fuck would I be standing here for? I said, all signs point to it. Nigga started asking to see my ticket like he work here. I said, nigga, you don't work here? And then he was like, well, I was just asking because I'm A2. You might be A3 or 4 or 5. Why does it fucking matter? A2 or 3 is not going to be any different. I put my headphones in and said, bro, stop talking to me. Just do what you want to do. I'm not trying to put on no, on no, no flat list. I swear to God, it's a true story. I said, bro, get out of my face, bro. Nigga think I, because uh, I'm, I'm black and I got, and I got grills and shit, I'm going to be in the back of the plane with the fucking peanuts and bathrooms and shit. What's wrong with that, nigga?